Joining us now is the Senate Minority Whip from the great state of South Dakota, Senator John Thune. Thank you, Senator, for joining us. H history is on the GOP side. The economy isn't doing well. And yet the projections are, uh, uh, according to some, for the Democrats to hold the Senate. Do you believe that to be true? Um, and if so, why? I don't, Trey. I think we're going to win it. And uh, by the way, nice to be with you and congratulations on the show. Um, I, I just think that in the end, when people, uh, the fundamentals of this election year lock in and people really start looking you know, at these at these candidates, the issues are going to be very clear and the contrast is going to be very clear. You know, the Democrats are trying to wave shiny objects out there and make it about something else. But in the end, it's going to be about the price of food. It's going to be about the price of gasoline. It's going to be about our energy security. It's going to be about the border and what a disaster that is. And it's going to be people asking, answering the question, do I feel safe in my neighborhood, safe in my community, safe in my country? I mean, it's a security issue, economic security, energy security. Uh, national security. I think those are the issue that are issues that are going to motivate voters uh, come election day. And so I think that the you know the conventional wisdom, the um, you know those who pontificate about these elections, at least right now, suggest perhaps the Democrats have an edge in the Senate. But I don't think that's going to play out that way. I think in the end, it's going to be: Are you supportive of this crazy agenda that's given you 40-year high inflation? And, uh, you know, and, and just a, a wide open porous border that's creating all kinds of security issues and, and crime in our, in our cities. I mean, I think these are the issues that motivate people to vote. All right, Senator, when I reflect back on, on being around you, reasonable, level headed, mature, an adult, so you're the perfect person for me to ask about reasonable <laughs> expectations, even if the House and the Senate were to flip to the GOP. President Biden is still going to be in office until January of 2025. So what is a realistic expectation for Republican voters, given the fact that a Democrat is going to be in the White House, even if Republicans take the House and the Senate this fall? Well, good point. And um, you, you obviously are getting at an issue that I'm sure that people are, are going to be thinking about as well. Uh, in, in terms of what can a Republican Congress accomplish with a Democrat in the White House with a veto pen, and that's a good, it's a, it's a fair question. But I think in the end, um, what it will force this administration to do is to re reorder their priorities. Uh, we'll have a lot more leverage. We'll have the power of the purse under the Constitution that resides with the Congress. Uh, we'll have, at least in the Senate, the power of confirmation. We'll be able to shape the people that he puts on the courts, the people that he puts in his ex executive branch agencies and departments. And so we'll be in a much better position to force him to the table. And maybe what it does, Trey, is forces Biden to become the moderate he promised his, he was going to be in the first place. I mean, remains to be seen how he would react to that. But one thing I know for certain is that this country and the American people need a check and balance against a reckless, extreme, far left agenda that's been promoted by this administration and their leadership in the Congress. There's no question in my mind that the American people are going to be looking for something that says we want to go in a different direction. And, uh, and the only way you get that check and balance on the legislative front and then also on the, on the nomination front in, the, in terms of how they populate their administration with people in these agencies and departments is by getting the House and the Senate back. And, uh, and I think more than anything else right now, we got we to stop the bleeding, stop the madness, stop the crazy spending. Stop the, you know, this uh, belief that we don't need an all of the above American energy program that makes us energy independent and is focused exclusively on giving, you know, wealthy people tax credits for electric vehicles. I mean, that's the sum total of their energy program. And I think that the administration or the people in this country are going to be looking for, for a change from this administration's agenda. We've only got a little bit of time left, Senator, but I am fascinated as people wrestle with whether or not to stay in public service. I think you really wrestled with whether or not to stay in what would it be and what has proven to be an incredibly safe seat for you. Did you wrestle with whether or not to run for reelection? And ultimately, why did you decide to do it? Well, you know, I did it. Uh, and by the way, we miss we miss you in Congress. We. You know, we need, I think, really, um, you know, principled leaders, uh, people who are willing to use common sense to make good decisions that are focused on solutions for this country. And I kind of looked at it and I just said, you know, I've got, I feel like I have something to offer. Um, and that right now where our country is and where our world 
is uh, is a time when I think we need um, people who are willing to step into the arena and be willing to do the right thing, no matter what the consequences or you know what the circumstances. And it was hard. I've got you know you spend as you know you spend 35 to 40 weeks a year in Washington D.C. I've got a family and kids and grandkids now all here in South Dakota, and uh, would love to be able to spend more time here with them. But in the end, it's about you know wanting to make a difference. And I think we all, um, hopefully in life, are want to do things that are purpose driven and that serve the causes that are greater than ourselves. And and uh, I just feel like this is an arena in which I can hopefully uh, contribute something to that. But as you point out, it's a it's a place where it can get very frustrating. And um, I understand the frustration the American people have too as they look at Washington. It some, seems like sometimes nothing gets done. Uh, but in the end, it really is about trying to get results, trying to get solutions, and trying to make a difference. Obviously, the people of South Dakota want you back. You won your primary overwhelmingly. Senator John Thune from the great state of South Dakota, thank you for joining us. Always good to be with you. Thanks, Trey. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.